just knock that off right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I teach and then Amber leaves. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, yeah, my name is Charlie Rush, and um, my wife and I are youth pastors. We've been youth pastoring a while, and um, um, today is uh, the third anniversary of us moving from the West Coast to Georgia. Wow. So, um, yeah. We, um, we love being here. It's a lot of fun. The weather's great. And, um, I seriously remember so much just watching Beth Yeshua online. Um, and I, I remember, you know, it's the West Coast, so it's, you know, early, early in the morning, you have to get up early in the morning and watch in your pajamas. And I remember just sitting there eating some breakfast cereal and watching. And I remember just thinking, man, I'm in deep trouble. I'm in deep trouble. I remember just listening to rabbis teachings and studying them all week long. And I just remember thinking, man, if half of what this guy is saying is true, I'm in real trouble. I have to really rethink a lot of things. I have to really, um, and then I, I, you know, I quick re- quickly realized it, w- it wasn't about Rabbi Greg or Beth Yeshua at all. It was all about God yes. and his word. And that, yeah, I was in a whole lot of trouble. So um, how it came to this point, I have no idea. And I'm not about to consider it that much. But um, I love you guys so much. I... I love the Lord. The things that he saves us from that we know about are so phenomenal. The things that he does for us that we know about are so phenomenal. But I look around the room and I see what some of you guys have been through in the last three years since I've known you what some of you have been through um, in the last three months, what a couple of you have been through in the last three days, and what I'm sure, you know, what some of you guys have been through in the last few minutes. Um, Coming into Shabbat, coming into this morning, it amazes me what the Lord has done for all of us. It just amazes me. And I'm I'm not trying to be funny that our mental health is as good as it is, that our physical health is as good as it is, that our spiritual health is as good as it is, I just, I just marvel and I just praise God. I just praise God. I am... Um, if you guys could turn to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear Israel, Adonai our God, Adonai is one. And you are to love Adonai your God with all of your heart, all your being, and all the resources that you have, all your resources. These words which I am ordering you today are to be on your heart. And you are to teach them, you are to teach them carefully, diligently to your children. You're to talk about them when you sit at home, when you're traveling on the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Tie them on your hand as a sign. Put them at the front of a headband around your forehead. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. Guys, why are we supposed to do it that way? Why are we supposed to do that? Why are we supposed to teach God's law so diligently to our children? Why are we supposed to do it that way? It's because it's important. And it's because it bears repeating. It's worth remembering. Steve Barker and I were sitting around one time. And um, is this ringing going to go on the whole time? Is anybody else hearing that? 
Okay, good. It's not just me, right? Okay, good. Somebody's on that? Good. Okay. Uh, Steve Barker and I, were, we were sitting around one time, and I think we were just having coffee in his dining room, and he's, we, I don't know how the subject came up, but we were like, how, sometimes how stupid signs are. Like, like, look at the back of the room, and you see exit signs. Like, like, I didn't know that that was the exit. Like, I need a sign to tell me that that's the exit. Like, so dumb. It's so dumb. Like, I can see that there's two doors there. I probably know that that's the exit. And then it's lit up too, right? And um, we, it, it got us thinking and talking about, you know, Steve works in the aerospace uh, industry and he's a mechanic and a, and a race car guy and handsome and a genius. Thanks, Steve. I want you to slow it down a bit for some of the rest of us. But um, we, um, we just got to talking about the reason that signs like that are, are so simplified is because you don't need them in the everyday you, you need them in an emergency. You need them when things are tight. You need it when you're in a tough spot. So every time you have gone through that door back there and you see that red lit up exit sign, you just, your brain knows that's the exit. Knows that. But if this room were on fire, if this room were filled with smoke, you would also... You would also see that exit sign. Why do we go through the liturgy every week? We did it last week. We know the liturgy. Why do we have to say these scriptures every week? Why do we do this? Why does my mom and dad keep going on about the same scriptures? Right? Why does Charlie keep telling me to honor my mother and my father? Everybody can honor their mother and their father when mom and dad take them to Chick-fil-A. Right? (laughs) Everybody can, you know, honor their spouse when they're sitting together at dinner or everybody's dressed up nice and stuff gets on fire, the room fills up with smoke. If there's an emergency, if I'm injured, if I'm not in my right mind due to adrenaline, that exit sign's going to come in real handy, real quick. And we go through these scriptures and we hide them in our heart and we do all these things. We must remain faithful to the instructions of God. Adonai is telling us where to go. He's telling us where the solid ground is. Sometimes we don't listen. We step on ground that's not solid, and then we say, hey, this ground is not solid. And God says, who told you to go over there in the first place? I, I have this path for you. I have this right way of living for you. We've been talking about these scriptures all the time. Again, like you see, like, on a fighter jet, like if you go down to the, to the air museum, it says, this is not a step. I'm like, he can fly a multi-million dollar aircraft. I'm pretty sure he knows how to get in and out of the dang thing. <laughs> but if the dang thing's on fire, if he's just set it down in a field, he needs a little bit of a reminder, don't step here, you will blow up. <laughs> we need these reminders. When everything's good and fine, and we're just having coffee in the morning, I didn't have coffee this morning. We didn't have any coffee at our house. And I was like, Lord, this is a trick from the enemy. I don't have coffee in my house. (laughs) And the Lord just showed me like all the congregational leaders in Beth Yeshua that didn't have their coffee this morning before they went off into the jungle. I was like, okay. Stephen didn't have his coffee. I don't need to whine about my coffee, but I didn't have coffee this morning. You guys, when things are tight, when things are tough, we have to remember these things. Don't forget don't forget, we're not, we may not always just be able to tune in every day to Beth Yeshua and just live stream. You can, there's more, more of rabbis' teachings online than you can shake a stick at, but you may not always be able to access them like that. You'll just have what you've hidden in your heart, and that's it. It takes maximum effort to remember this stuff and to do these things. Don't forget that, guys. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. It takes maximum effort to remember and do these things. Everybody's a nice guy, right? And then there's that one person at work that just drives you crazy. There's that one person on your team that just drives you crazy. There's that one person that gets on the same 
freeway entrance as you every morning. Whoever's driving that Prius, <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> bless your heart. I couldn't, I tried to stop it, but um, we forget these things, guys, at our own peril. Literally, we perish when we don't remember these things. If you don't know where to go and you don't know how to do Torah, you will perish. You forget these things at your own peril. We forget these things at our own peril. We neglect these things at our own peril. You have to already know how to do these things. The manager where, where I work, he has a whistle that could shatter every one of these windows. Right now, if he wanted to, he could shatter every one of these windows with his whistle. Why? Because when I need to look at him... I need to look at him right now. I need to see him right now. He doesn't have time. He's got little hand instructions he can do to... But I need to look at him. He needs my attention right now. There's all kind of trucks pulling in and stuff. And he does it really well. He runs it really well. But when I need to have his attention, I have a shema, Israel. You listen to me. You shema me, Israel. You listen with the intent to obey. Don't forget, Shema is not just to listen. It's to listen with the intent to obey. You Shema, me, Israel. You listen. You listen. We forget these things at our own peril. I just want you guys to turn to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 6, 9 through 15. Thus says Adonai, Sebeot, they will glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as in a vineyard one last time, like a grape picker, Pass your hand over the vines. To whom should I speak? Whom should I warn? Who will listen to me? Their ears are dull. They can't pay attention. For them, for them, the word of Adonai has become unattractive, an object of scorn. This is why I'm full of Adonai's fury. I'm weary of holding it back. Pour it out on the children in the street and on the groups of young men gathered. For husbands and wives will be taken together, seniors as well as the very old. Their homes will be turned over to others, their fields together with their wives. Yes, I will stretch out my hand against those who are living in the land, says Adonai. For, listen, for from the least to the greatest of them, all are greedy for gains. Prophets and Kohenim alike, they all practice fraud. They dress the wound of my people, but only superficially. They say, there is perfect peace when there is no peace. They should be ashamed of their detestable deeds, but they're not ashamed at all. They don't even know how to blush. Therefore, when others fall, they too will fall. When I punish them, they will stumble, says Adonai. God is, in this passage, he's, he's angry with Israel. He's angry in a time of apostasy. I didn't really, I went a long time on my Christian walk, and I didn't really know what apostasy was. I don't really understand it. Um, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary says that apostasy is the act of refusing to continue to follow, obey, or recognize a religious faith. I think that's a pretty good definition. Listen to what it is. It's an act of refusing to continue to follow, obey, or recognize a religious faith. It does not say it's the act of um, refusing to follow, or obey, or recognize your faith. It's the act to refu of refusing to continue. The world is not guilty of apostasy. They never, they never came in. They're never walking out, right? The world is not guilty. You and I, yes. you and I are in great peril of committing apostasy. Now, we're not if we walk in Torah. We're not, we're not if we recognize the signs. We're not if we obey Torah. We'll be fine. But if we do not adhere to God's word, and if we do not correctly handle the word of truth, then we, we are in 
in danger of committing apostasy. I love words. I really love words. It's, it took me a really, really long time to learn to read. Um, it didn't come easy if my, my mom, God bless you, mom, she really believed in spanking, and so I learned to read. Um, <laughs> oh, my Lord, my poor mother. God, mom, I love you so much. You did a great job. Thank you. Um, I, seriously, if I had been born to any other woman, I would never have learned to read. It didn't really take hold until like the fourth grade. And my poor mother, she, they, the, my mom's like, he can read. And she brought in all these books and I would read all these books. I had memorized them all. And so they put different words underneath the same pictures. And I just, she was like, he's a liar. I, I, my poor mom. Anyways, I love words. I learned to love to read and to love words. The word apostasy, it comes from late Latin apostasia, and it means a standing away or a withdrawing, a desertion. And the root, by the way, apo means away or off or apart. Apo is also used in a similar sounding but mostly unrelated word, apostle. Apostasy, apostle, very, very different words, but they have that, that same apo, apo. An apostle is one who is sent forth. An apostle is someone who steps forth, who, who is sent forth, I mean. An apostle is someone who is sent forth. Someone who does apostasy, they're just stepping out. You guys look at Hebrews chapter 10. Ten twenty three says, let us continue holding fast to the hope we acknowledge. Let us continue holding fast to the hope we acknowledge without wavering, for the one who made the promise is trustworthy. The one who made the promise is trustworthy. Let us continue holding fast to the hope we acknowledge without wavering, for the one who made the promise is trustworthy. And let us keep paying attention to one another in order to spur each other on toward love and good deeds, not neglecting our own congregational meetings, as some have made a practice of doing, but rather encouraging each other. And you just kind of look back at verse 19. It says, So brothers, we have confidence to use the way into the holiest place opened by the blood of Yeshua. He inaugurated it for us as a new and living way through the paraket by means of his flesh. We also have a great Cohen over God's household. Therefore, let us approach the holiest place with a sincere heart in the full assurance that comes from trusting with our hearts sprinkled clean from a bad conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us continue holding fast to the hope we acknowledge without wavering for the one who made the promise is trustworthy. Guys, Hold fast. Hold fast. Why in the world does the Bible have to tell us to hold fast if there isn't danger, right? They tell you, hold on, like hold on. Nobody has to tell you to hold on in, if, like, if you're on a roller coaster. Like you, you know that you're going on a roller coaster. You know you have to hold on, right? But sometimes we forget about the danger. We forget. And we do become complacent. We get used to, we drive every day, and we do these things every day, and we go to see our coworkers every day, and we forget about the danger in life. We forget about things. Hold fast. Guys, not every person that calls himself a Christian is holding fast in this time. Every single, there are true believers all over the world. There are people in the Catholic Church that are true believers. There are people that are Baptists that are true believers. There are people all over the world that are true believers. There is no branch of Christianity. There is no area of God's people that isn't looking at one another going, you can't do that, guys. You cannot do that. The, the, the Christian church in Germany right now is having humongous arguments about you are simply setting up a conversation to not behave the Bible, to not obey Torah. 
That's all you're doing. You're, you're calling it this and you're calling it that, but all you're doing is starting a discussion about we're not going to obey the Bible. If someone wanted to form a committee to start a campfire right there on row four in the middle of this room, hey, we're just starting a discussion. How about you don't say it one more time or I'll punch you in the face? <laughs> we're not having a discussion about starting a campfire indoors. Exit signs or no. I don't want to start a discussion about doing something so dumb and so anti-Torah. I don't want to have that discussion. I don't want to have that discussion. Let's have a discussion about how we can obey it better or understand it better. Let's have that discussion. Now, I'm not mad at you if you want to start a campfire indoors. I don't hate you. You're still my Christian brother. But if I see you around some matches, I'm going to punch your face. <laughs> I'm serious. Right where your teeth are, I'm going to punch it right there. I don't want to have that discussion, guys. My flesh would love, would love nothing better than to be able to do whatever I want to do and not worry about it. If I could eat a dozen donuts every morning, oh. <laughs> if I could do whatever I wanted to do, if I could make myself believe that I could talk to that Prius whatever way I wanted to, I am sorry, Prius. Leave earlier or something, though, could you, please? But that's not okay. I have to work on my attitude towards that Prius driver. I don't get to do whatever way I want. I don't get to do whatever way I want. And for those of you that are listening to this and you disagree with me, I, I love you. You're great. But consider this. If there was a fire in the lobby, you don't get to use that as an excuse to try to start one in here. And a lot of Christians say, well, the church hasn't done a great job with divorce, so the, we should have extra liberty in these other areas. I don't, again, because something's on fire doesn't mean we start another one. Let's put the fire out. Let's stop getting divorced. How about that? Uh, 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 listen, if there's someone who's been married in here for more than a year, we all have had those days where like, boy, it's seven o'clock in the morning and I'm not sure if I'm going to still be married at seven o'clock at night. Or I'm not sure my husband's going to be alive at seven o'clock at night. So don't think I'm up here acting like I've got it all together or I'm all that. You guys have met my wife. I've been married for 22 years because she's wonderful, Right? You are pretty great. <laughs> you guys, Isaiah 56 says, here's what Adonai says. Observe justice. Do what is right, for my salvation is close to coming, my righteousness to being revealed. Happy is the person who does this. Anyone who grasps it firmly who holds on to it, who holds fast, anyone who grasps it firmly and keeps Shabbat and does not profane it and keeps himself from doing any evil, a foreigner join, joining Adonai should not say, oh man, Adonai will se separate me from his people. No, you shouldn't say that, it says. The Bible says, don't, don't sweat that. Don't worry about that. Likewise, the eunuch should not say, I'm only a dried up tree. For here's what Adonai says, as for the eunuchs who keep my Shabbats, who choose what pleases me and holds fast to my covenant, who holds fast to my covenant in my house, within my walls, I will give them power and a name greater than sons and daughters. I will give him an everlasting name that will not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to Adonai, to serve him, to love the name of Adonai, and to be his workers, all who keep Shabbat and do not profane it, and hold fast to my covenant, I will bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. 
Adonai Elohim says, he who gathers ex the Israel's exile says, there are yet others I will gather. And talk about the good news. Yeah. There are yet others I will gather besides those gathered already. And then he says, all you wild animals come and devour. Yes, all you wild animals in the forest. Because Israel's watchmen are all of them blind. They don't know anything. They're all dumb dogs. Not like dumb, like they, start, they don't bark. is because they're, I mean, they're dumb. They're all dumb dogs. They're unable to bark. They're lying there dreaming, loving sleep. Greedy dogs, never satisfied. Such are the shepherds, unable to understand. They all turn to their own way, each one intent on his own gain. Come, I'll get some wine and we'll fill up our good, strong liquor. Tomorrow will be like today. In fact, I'll be even better. We can't let this be us, guys. We have to hold fast. In the Hebrew word, it's hazak. We have to hold fast. We have to hold on tight. Hazak. We have to hold on fast. We must stand our ground. We must sound the alarm with truth and grace. We dare not water down the message, guys. We must not add to it or subtract anything away from it. We must hazak. We must hold fast. You guys, Proverbs 6.20 says, My son, obey your father's command and don't abandon your mother's teaching. Don't abandon it. Don't divorce yourself from it. Don't leave it. Why does the writer of these Proverbs instruct his son like this? To obey his commands? Because he loves him. He wants him to have what is good and right and true. He wants him to live a long and healthy, happy life full of peace and prosperity, full of shalom. You guys, we were, um, we were at the Seventh Mile Camp where Chris and Kim Yon work. It's an amazing place. They're amazing people. You can just go ahead. They're, they're amazing. We were out there, and I think it was like the day before the kids arrived for this camp, and, um, which was... Just, I can't even tell you enough good things about it. Each of the, it was, it was kids in the foster care system, and they gave them each a birthday with their own birthday cake and their own presents, and they dressed them up as princes and princesses and as knights, and um, it was just amazing. There was a, they have a water slide and a pirate ship and an airplane, and I don't know, it was like, it was really great. Uh, oh, and there was stuff for the kids, too. Anyways, um, <laughs> it was really great. But I was traveling on a golf cart, and I was, it's like 30-some acres, isn't it, babe? It's like 30 acres. And so I was traveling on a golf cart down this, like, very bumpy road, not really made for a golf cart, and I was going pretty fast. And uh, my son, Gavin, was behind me in a golf cart. And I, I pulled over, and I said, son, go where I go. Just follow my tire tracks. Don't, you know, just go right where I go. Because there was a bunch of big bumps, you know, it was like big, huge holes and stuff to fall in and debris and stuff. And so I said, just follow where I, where I go. Just, just follow me. And so as I was going, and I'm looking in this kind of rear view mirror on this golf cart, and I've never, I don't golf. I've never been on a golf course during the daytime. And, um, <laughs> and so I, um, I'm on this golf cart and I'm watching Gavin and the Lord just opened my eyes. He said, that's you. I'm driving down this road through these trees in this forested area and I'm looking at my son in the rear view mirror and God tells me, that's you. Just like I am telling my son, stay on the path. Stay on my tire tracks. Just stay in my tire tracks. Just stay behind me, son. Just stay behind me. Go where I tell you to go. Go where I tell you to go. Obey your father's command and don't abandon your mother's teaching. Guys, we must, we must lovingly encourage people. We have to speak the truth, right? There is grace, but we have to speak it with love. We, don't, we dare not be those guys that like, you know you're going to hell, right? Because you're a sinner. Right? And when one of us messes up, we can't be jerks to each other, right? right? We just can't be jerks to each other. We've got to treat each other with love. Amen. I love you guys, and I know you love me, and, and we're all so fortunate to be here 
with Rabbi and Joe and David to take care of us and ensure that the Torah is being taught correctly and that there's leadership and that there's accountability and that there's understanding. And I praise God for every second of it. Because guys, you and I, we may speak in the tongues of men and angels, but if we lack love, we become merely blaring brass or a, a, a symbol that's clanging. We may have the gift of prophecy or fathom all mysteries and know all things and have all faith, enough to move mountains, but if we lack love, we are nothing. We may give away everything that we own. We may even hand over our bodies to be burned, but if we lack love, we gain nothing. Guys, love is patient and kind. It's not jealous. It's not boastful. It's not proud. It's not rude. It's not selfish. It's not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. You're going to need supernatural power for that. Amen. <laughs> Love does not gloat over other people's sins, but it takes delight in the truth. Love always bears up. Love always trusts. It always hopes. It always endures. It never ends. But prophecies will pass. Tongues will cease. Knowledge will pass. For our knowledge is partial and our prophecy partial. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I sure argued like a child. Now that I have become a man, I have finished with childish ways. For now we see obscurely like in a mirror. But then it will be face to face. Now I know partly, but then I will know fully, just as God has fully known me. But for now, guys... Three things last, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Yes. Guys, look at Proverbs 28.4. And I was reading one morning, and this just hit me like a bomb. Just like, do you just ever have those times where you see, like, I know I've read that so many times, but I just looked at 28.4, and I was like, what in the world? Those who abandon Torah praise the wicked. God forbid. But those who keep the Torah fight them. Man, just look at that thing for a second. Well, the first half, that really kind of bothers me. I mean, if I abandon Torah, if I don't obey God's word, I'm just praising the wicked. I don't want to be that guy. And how do I fight all this nonsense in the world? How do I fight all this nonsense in the media, in government, in business? How do I, I don't even need to, I don't even need to fuss with it. I don't even need to fuss with it. All I have to do is what? Just, just keep Torah. Just hold fast. Just hazak. Just hold on fast to it. You go nuts and do your crazy. You're not going to splatter that on me. I'm over here holding fast to the Torah. I don't even need to worry about that foolishness. I don't even need to worry about that nonsense. I won't have it. I'm over here holding fast. I'm going to hold fast. I'm going to hold fast. How do I even, I don't even know how to fight all this nonsense. I don't even need to worry about it. I don't even need to worry about that nonsense. It was not me, right? Not me. I'm over here holding fast to Torah. Am I doing it perfectly? No. No, man, I would make a great sinner. Oh, I would make a great sinner. I am serious. I have, I would, I'll be good at it. I know that I am not the world's best Christian and it bothers me. I want to get better at this. And I, I, I sweat that. I sweat, I want to get better at being a Christian. I'm like, man, I, I'll make a great sinner though, boy. I would tear it up. <laughs> now I realized very early on when I was like 20 years old, I realized I have committed my life to, to Jesus, right? I've committed my life to Yeshua. And I knew it was the weirdest thing, but I knew like I have basically decided to be no good at the greatest thing there is to do rather than be really good at something stupid. 
I knew, like, if I just continue to be a sinner, I will be the king of sinners. I would rock this world. They wouldn't even see what's coming when Charlie Rush comes in full sin. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a Christian, and everybody's going to look and go, that guy's not very good at that. But I, you know what? Color me Christian. Color me trying real hard. Yes. Color me digging deep and hazak, holding fast. <laughs> Look at that guy. He is holding on for all he's got. Yes. I told you guys about my brother Jeff water skiing, that he didn't understand once you lose the ski, you got to let go. <laughs> Jeff didn't get the memo. I'm telling you, we towed him for a, a, a mile uh, down. We're like, what in, what's he doing? Like, I don't think he knows how to swim. And so he just had no blue, 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 on his lips, man. It was his lips that were blue, 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 blue. But that's Jeff. Hazak, hold fast. It ain't always pretty when you're holding fast, guys. It's all good in the hood when you know what you're doing and you look good and your suit's nice and everything looks good and your children are behaving all three of them at once for once. Sorry, boy. That's lovely. But when you step in it, that ain't easy. You can say hazak and it seems like this. We're going to hold fast and it's so great. Sometimes holding fast is with the ugly face. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, hold fast. We're going to hold fast, everyone. Hold fast. <laughs> That's not what it's. Hold fast, guys. Hold on, baby. You got to hold on. You don't worry about, is my hair, am I? You got to hold fast. It's not always going to look great, guys. That's not even in the notes. That's just, it's not always going to look great. Speaking about looking great. Look at Jeremiah 6, 9 through 15 again. Thus says Adonai, they will glean the remnant of Israel as thoroughly as in a vineyard. One last time, like a grape picker, pass your hand over the vines. To whom should I speak? Whom should I warn? Who will listen to me? Their ears are dull. They can't pay attention. For them, the word of Adonai has become unattractive. God forbid. God forbid. Think about the word attractive. Attractive. And think about the word unattractive, right? Now think about the word distraction. Distraction. What's the root word of all of those? You could say traction. Traction. When you go to the hospital and you're injured and you have to be immobilized, they put you in traction. They hold everything fast so that you don't injure yourself more. Guys, When the word of God becomes unattractive. When Christians start apologizing for God's word and explaining it away. It doesn't really mean that. Or that was just in the Old Testament. Or, you know, God forbid, that was all nailed to the cross. Or God, come on guys, that's not in there. For me, the word of God is not unattractive. It's attractive. It's beautiful. But here's why the word of God becomes unattractive. Why does it become unattractive? Because of distraction. Because of distraction. I love my neighbor. I want to hang out with my neighbor. My neighbor's good at this. My neighbor lives a lifestyle that's completely opposed to everything God stands for. So if if my neighbor and all his interesting pursuits becomes 
a distraction to me, right? I become distracted and I stop holding fast because I want to get to where my neighbor's at and what he's doing. I love my neighbor. I can still speak the truth to my neighbor. I can still hang out with my neighbor, right? But I can in no shape, fashion, or form allow my neighbor or anything else or anything else to prove a distraction to me, to distract me, to distract, to cause me to let go, to let loose of Torah, to go pursue what my neighbor's doing, what my friends are doing. I cannot do that. I dare not do that. We have this hope as a sure and safe anchor for ourselves, a hope that goes right on through to what is inside the paraket. Let us continue holding fast to the hope we acknowledge without wavering for the one who made the promise is trustworthy. Guys, hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. Don't let go. Let's don't let go of each other. Let's don't let go of God. Let's don't let go of God's word. Just hold fast to it. Don't worry about everything else. If you take care of Yeshua, Yeshua will take care of everything else. Hold fast to God's word, guys. God bless you. Thank you so much, Charlie. If you could stand with me. Adonai told Moshe to tell Aaron and his sons to bless Israel like this. It's number six. Look it up. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Yo ear out an eye upon a veleka, ve who neka, he sat on a high upon a veleka, we ascend the car. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Have a great week. <laughs>